So this video I'm going to address the difference between a motor start capacitor and a motor run capacitor. Now, there's a couple of fundamental differences between these two and it has to do mostly with their construction and their ability to handle uh, current for extended periods of time. Now a motor run capacitor will be something like this here and it's engaged in the circuit all the time. These are often used for uh, phase delay or power factor correction. You'll see these a lot in HVAC units and larger single phase motors. Um, they're an oil cooled, they're generally in a metal case. Uh, they're filled with oil. They tend to be uh, fairly low capacitance ratings. So an example here, I've got 15 microfarads. Uh, this one here is five microfarads. They're fairly small capacitance values. Um, and that's all that's really necessary often for the, for the run operation on a motor. Now a start capacitor on the other hand, these tend to be a bit larger, both physically, although not always, but they're also uh, larger in capacitance value. So for example, this guy here, I've got uh, 430 to 516 microfarad. This is something to note on these capacitors. Start capacitors have a range. They're not dead on a lot of the times. That's because the uh, phase shift produced by running AC current through a start capacitor isn't as uh, precise or the precision isn't necessary to get a motor turning. It just needs to be able to generate a fairly large shift in order for the motor to start turning. Internally on these you have pretty much the same construction. It's two conductive plates with an insulating layer in between the two and it's wrapped generally in a coil around and around and around. So the two plates aren't touching each other, uh, electrically anyway. And you'll generate a charge on one and it it transfers to the other in the case of AC or in DC it'll charge and hold like a battery. Now these capacitors, motor start and run capacitors, are AC rated capacitors. And when you look on the label of these, you'll see the voltage rating here. Uh, so for example, this one says here 250 volts AC, a uh, little air one here, 220 to 250 volts. And on the run caps here, I've got 370 to 440. When you're sizing up capacitors, if you're not replacing one already, if you're just sizing one to start with, you want to make sure that the voltage rating on your capacitor is about one and a half times your line rated voltage. This is because the voltage ratings on these is not RMS, uh, but rather peak to peak voltage. On a 240 volt system, run capacitors, you'll see 370 to 440 volts. Uh, 480 volt systems, you'll often see 600 volt rated capacitors used on those. And it's just to account for the, uh, the extra peak to peak current, or I mean voltage levels that, that are present in such a thing. Now, the other big difference between these two is duty cycle. Run, motor run capacitors are 100% duty cycle. They can remain in the circuit indefinitely, charged up. So in this case, if I have my I have my box here, 240 volts AC, and I can connect this right across this capacitor here, like that, and I can switch this on. If we measure it here, we can put our voltmeter on AC and see that there is indeed voltage present on the terminals. Right there, I got 244.7 volts, and this one's fine to just leave here. Like I said, it's 100% duty cycle. You can leave it on and just in there, if you had a motor running with this, or your air conditioner pump, or something along those lines, uh, this kind of capacitor it just is left in the circuit. You can use motor run capacitors as start capacitors. However, you cannot use start capacitors as motor run capacitors. Now, I'm going to show you why here in just a second. The disadvantage if you try to use motor run capacitors, that's still live so I don't want to touch it. The disadvantage to using motor run capacitors as a startup in the circuit is generally for the startup of the motor to be able to develop torque, you need a very high capacitance value. To get 150 or 400 microfarads out of 15 microfarad capacitors, you'd need an entire array of these. If you've got the space for that, then that would work out fine for you. 
Now, and this is still energized, like I said, as you can see, there's, there's no effect to having this in the circuit continuously. So let me go ahead and turn that off. And I'm going to bleed down the capacitor with a resistor real quick, just to make sure that there's no voltage left on it. I don't want to get shocked. There we go. Set the meter to DC because when you turn these capacitors off, if you watch my other video on start caps about bleed, resi bleed down resistors, you'll see that when you turn these off, if you turn them off during a period in the AC waveform other than the zero crossing, these can actually store a DC voltage up to lethal levels. Now I'm going to show you a start capacitor. And when we put a start capacitor into a car uh, current carrying circuit here, it's good for a couple of seconds. Now, a lot of times the failure of these will be due to an overloaded motor or a motor that doesn't start up all the way, or if you have the centrifugal cutout switch that doesn't cut out in time and it holds the capacitor in the circuit too long. Um, well, let's show you what happens here. Safety first. When you leave these things engaged for more than a couple of seconds here, uh, they don't fare too well. Now if you do open up your HVAC unit or your motor, and you find, you find something like this inside, uh, go ahead and give Temco a call. We carry a full line of replacement capacitors. It's area code 510-403-4061, and we'd be happy to hook you up with some brand new start or run capacitors for your application to get you back going again. Also, Facebook page is up. Like us on there, follow us on YouTube, leave us comments or suggestions on videos you guys would like to see. I'll either answer your questions or I'll shoot a video for you with, uh, with the response there. Tune in uh, next time here and maybe I'll blow something else up.